Good morning, Saints. Good morning. It's good to be back with you. I was told this morning I had the privilege of reading scripture, and I'm happy to do it. But anyway, yeah. I was thinking as I was sitting there with a few minutes notice that no better scripture to use than the scripture for my Sunday school lesson. Yeah. So I know you've been through it once this morning. Yeah. Teacher sitting right there, but we're gonna go back to it one more time. We're in Revelation 22, yeah. where it speaks about the river of life. We had a robust discussion about that this morning. But let's read together, beginning with verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. I'm reading from the New King James Version. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face. And his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to so show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold. I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. Hallelujah and amen. We're thankful that the Lord gave us this word to live by and prepare us for where we have to go. It's a joy. With the reading complete for this morning, we're going to say a prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we're grateful to be here this morning. You brought us here from different places, from different activities. We come through different degrees of difficulty that we may not have anticipated, but yet we're here. Some of us may have been sick last week, and some of us may have had some financial concerns to deal with. Some may have some family matters that we had to concern. Some were traveling, but Yet we're here. Some of us are looking around to see who else is not here that somebody expected to sit next to may not be here, but yet you're here. Some of us are online and not here in person, but you're online and you're here to be a part of the service also. So when we recognize all these things put together, we only we know that it's only through you, Jesus Christ, that we are part of this service. It's only by your will and testament that we can participate and share in what you have for us today. Father, we lift our hearts up to you. We surrender our minds and our souls to you. We give them to you the perfect and complete control of our lives. We say thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for how you bless us. Thank you, Lord, for us keep being as well with us today as it is because it didn't have to be. You see, you woke us up this morning, but yet many people never got up. You gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength, and some don't have that. We were able to get up and walk with two feet and be laid, but I know people that can't do that anymore. We were able to get up and go to come out to the house of the Lord, and yet we sometimes don't recognize you. And thank you for what you've done. Because we know that you're not going to be with just with what we've done, but you're going to continue to be with us. You're going to continue to guide us on all the things we to you. We've got your blessings to welcome us. As we go forward in the rest of this service, Father, we, we, we just want to let you know that everything we do, every talk we have, every effort we make is 
surrendered unto you. We have nothing that you don't give us. We have no desires that you can't give unto us. We have nothing else to reach for. We have nothing else to understand. We have nothing else that we can call upon except the name of the Lord, the Savior, Jesus, the Christ. So with that knowledge, we're going to find you and continue on this service. We're going to just bless your name. We're going to thank you for what you do. And as we continue, we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah and amen. Dwelling with him 
So he won't have to worry about those things. He'll give us healing. He'll bind our wounds. There will be no sin. Okay? Sin can't. Yeah. He can't. You can't dwell with him if you know there's sin. Those people go to another place. Yeah. Uh, spiritual brokenness. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
How about you love? Thank God that they got married. Some of the men start prospirations. He said, you know what, baby, I love you so much that the scripture says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He said, that means that we ought to stand in the gap and die for the one we love. He said, baby, I'm willing to die for you if you come down to it. She was all happy when he said that, just blushing, clean from ear to ear. So after they left, good, they went out to the convenience store to get something out of the convenience store. Okay. As soon as they got to the counter, a man with a shotgun busted through the door oh, and pointed his shotgun at the rest. Said, give me all your money. And then he pointed at his wife. So she looked at her husband. And he looked at her. He said, what you doing? Give him the purse. Give him your money. As he gave her the purse, Give him the purse. He ran, he ran out the door and he looked up. She looked at the wife again, at the husband again. She said, uh, a few minutes ago, a few hours, you told me that you were going to die for me. She said, what happened? He said, yeah, I was going to die for you, but not today. <laughs> Many of us had said something out of our mouths based off our emotions, based off the spur of the moment. Saying something out of our mouth that 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 we 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 were so genuine when we said, yeah. but when the time comes to perform what we said, yeah. we perform the thing. Yeah. You know our words have power. Yeah. The thing that we speak out of our mouths has power. Yeah. More than we believe, yeah. more than we understand, yeah. and, and and we are sometimes judged off the things that we say out of our mouth. Uh, sometimes when we say things out of our mouth, we give people our word. And, and, and they, they, they hang off the things that we say out of our mouth. Because the word is all that we have. Uh -huh. And our word is, is built. It builds our character. Yeah. It builds who we are. And sometimes when we say things out of our mouths, and sometimes we, we say it out of emotions, we say it out of spur of the moment, but do we really say it for me? what we say out of our mouths. All right, all right, all right. And most importantly, that's tied to our words, right. is our follow-through. Are we going to perform what we said out of our mouths? Are we going to live up to the things that we speak out of our mouths? Yeah. Are we just talking and not saying nothing? Yeah. All right. but, but, but most important, our words are more important, is here in the church. Amen. We, as members of the church, uh -huh. have an obligation by God to speak, not only to speak, but to back up what we say. Because yeah. people are looking at what we say. Yeah. People are hanging our hats on what we say. Uh -huh. Are they really genuine Christians? Can we believe and trust what they say? That they are, are, are leaning on the things that we say. And us especially as leaders of the church. We, we, we not only are supposed to be accountable for the things we say in the church, but most importantly, outside the church. Amen. Whether we like it or not, we are being watched. Yeah. Yeah. Not only by people that know we go to church, uh -huh. but by the Almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. He said, His eyes is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. So, so he are looking to perform his work. And he entrusted in us to not only to speak his word, not only to believe his word, but to show his word through our actions and the things that we say. As we tune in on this chapter, we're looking at a leader here, which is Pete. He is in a focal point of this message. Peter was a good leader. Mm -hmm. He was a man of faith. Uh -huh. He believed God. Yeah. He heard every word that Jesus said. He believed on everything that Jesus said out of his mouth. But in his faith, he had some flaws. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We all have flaws in our faith. Yeah. Yeah. We all are not perfect. 
We all make mistakes. But, but God knows that we have flaws. But he wants our, our flaws to be correct. Amen. Peter had some flaws in his, in his walk with Jesus. He was the leader of all the disciples. And, and, and Jesus knew that when it was time for him to depart from this world, that he had to correct Peter's flaws before he leave. And, and Peter was so headstrong. He was always speak without thinking at times. Yeah. We would get him in trouble. And as we come up on this scripture, there was a time when, 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 when Peter would speak good words at the beginning. Like in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus asked his disciples, Who did you say I, the son of man, am? And Peter spoke of the dial of Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. And a few verses after that, Jesus said, I must go. And, and died for the sins of his brother. Peter said, oh, no, I can't let you do that, Lord. And Jesus looked at Peter and spoke the same. Yeah. Sometimes Peter would just speak without thinking. Yeah. Uh -huh. And would get himself in trouble. Yeah. And, and leading up to the supper, during the supper, Jesus took off his robe uh -huh. and started washing his disciples' feet. Uh -huh. And when he got to Peter, Peter said, oh, Lord, you can't never wash my feet. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, go ahead and take me a bath. Not only my feet, Lord, but my hands and my head too. <laughs> he would just speak sometimes without thinking. Yes. Which got him in trouble. Yes. So Jesus said, let, let, let me work on this boy. So, so, so after supper, Jesus said, all y'all going to be offended to, in, in me this night. He said, he put up the scripture back in Zechariah. I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall scatter. Amen. And Peter spoke up again. He said, Lord, even though they might be offended in you, I will never be offended in you. Come on, sir. And Jesus told him, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has a desire to have you. Mm -hmm. Then he may sit to you as we. Well. He said, but I pray for you. That your faith fails not. Yes. Now, now, now. Jesus said, Sign and sign. Satan has desire to have you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That word desire means Satan went up before the throne of God uh -huh. and pleaded with God. Yes. Begged God to let me have peace. Uh -huh. Let me put my hands on. Come on, uh -huh. let, let me put them in the center. He said, give them to me, Lord. See, Satan only can give us two ways. Uh -huh. By permission or by rights. Mm -hmm. If you're doing things that belong to Satan, he has a right yes. to mess with us. Yes. Because all sin belongs to him. Yes. Yes. And he has to get permission by God. Uh -huh. Because if you go back to the book of John, when Satan came up before God, God was bragging on Job and said, Have you considered my servant Job? Oh, a man who was upright and the shoes was evil. He said, I can't get around until you got a hedge around him. Uh -huh. If you can move that hedge, if I get to my guarantee, he will curse you to your face. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't happen. Chapter 2. He said, Let me get at his body. And Satan cannot do anything unless God allows. And God put limitations on what Satan can do to you and to me. Yeah, yeah. And he told us that you can mess with his body, but don't take his life. Yes, See, he goes up before God to get permission yes, for me and for you. So he can allow his hands to get on us. Uh -huh. so, so Satan wanted to, to sit Peter as we I brought a prophet. I know my niece gonna laugh at me because I always bring props when she laughs at me. <laughs> I brought here a sitter. Right, right. yeah. When we were little, my mom used to always use one of these things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we didn't really know what she used it for. Uh -huh. But we knew when she used this in the morning, we was getting homemade biscuits. Oh, right. <laughs> when she used it in the evening, we would get a homemade cake. 
we get homemade pies, we make our own pie crust, or homemade peach cobbler. We knew when she used this in the morning, or the evening, he was getting something homemade. We didn't know what, what she was using for, all we cared about the coming after, the cakes and the pies he was going back. But later on, I asked her, I said, what, what, why would you, and what's the purpose of behind using this? She said, when you put the flour, you use. You, you sift the flour yeah. to keep the lumps out. Keep the lumps. So the pure can fall through the fire. Yes. She said, because when you're baking, you can't have no lumps in your flour. Everything got to be pure. Yeah. And when she told me that, I got a message. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's sometimes, y'all. When we say things out of our mouths, we may be genuine, we may be sincere, but there may be some lumps in our faith that God got allowed to be sifted out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We made all these promises. Lord, if, if, if you give me every Sunday off, I guarantee you I'll come to church. Come on, sir. Or Lord, if, if you heal my mom and my dad, I promise you I will do right. I promise you I will start going to church. I promise you I will stop cussing. I promise you all these things, Lord, if you just heal my mom or my dad. Yeah. Lord, if, if you give me this job that I so desire, I promise you I will pay my tithes, Lord. Yeah. All the words we just spoke was put in the city. Yeah. And when the time comes for you to, to, to perform what you said to the Lord, we don't see you in church. You have to change the bit. You ain't gave God one penny. Because your words was put in the sin. The sin. And I believe that, that God is sitting in the church today. In the book of uh, Amos, God said, I'm going to sit the whole house of Israel. I'm going to put them in the sin like corn is being sit. He said, those who continue to do wrong, think it's okay, you're not going to escape this one. And I believe God has put the whole church to a sifter right now. Yeah. And I believe it started when the pandemic stopped. Uh -huh. Because before the pandemic, everybody was talking about how much they love the Lord, how much they trust them, how much they lean on them for everything. Yes. Yes. As soon as the pandemic hit, we oh, no. started sifting the same. Yes. <laughs> Some of us got feet. Some of us got scared. Yes. Some of us even left the church. Yes. Amen. Even leaders of the yes. church. He put them to a set. Yes. And he exposed some of them on TV. I know. I seen a pastor in New York. He was robbed doing service. Yes. Yes. Scripture says in Ezekiel 34, Go to the shepherd who feed themselves but don't feed the flock. And another one in Missouri is calling this church. God did that on purpose to sit, to leave. Jesus told Peter, Satan decided had to, to sit you, to put you in the sit. Y'all hear that noise? Yeah. To shake you up, to destroy you. As we. He said, but I pray for you yeah. that your faith fail not. Yeah. See, see, when, when, when we're going through trials and tribulations, when we're going through sickness and disease, yeah. how do we pray? He said, Lord, heal them. Lord, restore them. But do we ever pray for their faith? Yeah. Do we ever lift up their faith to the Lord? So, Lord, strengthen their faith while they're going through. Yeah. Help them in their faith that they can hold on to your unchanging hand when they fall apart. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith fails not. Yes. But when thou art converted, go strengthen your brother. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And Peter said, Lord, I won't deny you. In Matthew's version, he said, even though others will deny you, yes. but I will never deny you. And all the disciples said, yeah, we agree. We ain't going to deny you, Lord. And as soon as the Judas came and kissed Jesus, yes. betrayed him with a kiss, yes. when the soldiers grabbed Jesus, the 
scripture book would be all the disciples took off. Yeah. And Peter stood back afar off, still trying to live up to his word. I'm not going to deny Jesus. Peter is still in the background. Yeah. And they took Jesus to the judgment hall, well. sitting in the background, yeah. still trying to hold on to his words. I'm not going to deny you, Jesus. He was getting ready to get put into a sin. Yes, sir. As, as, as he was looking at Jesus, yes. he went to warm himself by the fire. Yes. Yes. And somebody said, uh, what you with him? <laughs> Peter like, uh-uh. No, yes. I wasn't with him. Yes, sir. Waiting for that booster to be pro. Yes. And he didn't pro. A little while long, another said, you were with him. You were got me, you was with him. People like, uh-uh, I wasn't with him. <laughs> and by the space of an hour, it went past. Uh -huh. yeah. Come on, sir. Peter was still waiting for that rooster to crow. Yeah. But Jesus told him, they ain't going to crow until you deny me. And by the space of one hour, he's in the city. Yeah. And, and, and they said, yeah, you was one of them. You was with him. Yeah. And Jesus, Peter started cussing and all that and said, I wasn't with this man. And you know how back in the day when we was living, yeah. when we act up in church, yeah. when we act up in the store, yeah. my mom let it turn and look at us yeah. and give us that look. Yeah. Say, boy, you better straighten up. Yeah. When Peter denied Jesus the third time, oh. Jesus gave Peter that look. My and God. it went right through Peter's heart. Yes, sir. And the scripture says Peter felt that pain and went out yeah. and wept bitter. He was in the center at that time. Satan wanted to destroy people. Yeah. Wanted him to separate himself from God. And that's what Jesus said, I pray for you yeah. that your faith fails not. Yeah. When, when the barrel is pointed at your face, when it's time to live up to the word that you spoke out of your mouth, yeah. Peter couldn't live up to what he said. Wow. He, could you imagine how he felt in his soul? How he felt in his spirit when he couldn't live up to his word and when Jesus gave him that eye contact? He could have felt pain, oh anguish, yeah. disappointment, yeah. unworthy, because I failed Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And when you feel in that way, yeah. when you can't live up to your word, when you promise Jesus, there are times when you want to crawl under a rock yeah. and die. Yeah. Peter felt like crawling under a rock and die because he failed Jesus. Yes. And when you fall like that, there are times when you fall and you will never get back up. That's why Jesus said, I pray that your faith fails not. And when you fall all the way down, I pray that you get right back up. Because there's forgiveness in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. God allowed us to be sifted just to see how pure our words are. He allowed us to be sifted to see how many love we got in our faith. We can be sincere in our words. We can be genuine in our words. Well, but how much purity do we have in our words? Yeah. If, if we put our words in the center and only turn it a couple times, we in trouble. Because there's no purity in our words. No. See, what I mean by purity is, you, is you, you have so much trust in God that you don't worry about the outcome. Because you know God got your back. Yes, God's going to keep you no matter what you go through in this life. Yes, See, we all came this morning and said it on purity. Did you shake the pew before you sat in? Did you look at the pew before you sat in? You just sat down because you know the pew is going to hold you up. Treat Jesus the same way. Treat his word the same way. When you got pure faith, you don't worry about what's going to happen because you know God got your back. And Jesus had to show Peter an example. He told his disciples, for three years, I must go and die. In three days, I will rise again. Jesus Christ showed his example. How to live up to what you say out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, as he was going to cap, he never experienced pain. Uh -huh. He never experienced hurt. Yeah. He never experienced separation. Yeah. But on the way to cap, oh, even yeah. though he saw it, but he never experienced it. Yeah. But on the way to cap, yeah. as he prayed to his disciples, he said, Father, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. But not my will, that will be done. Couple more steps and pray the same prayer again. Father, if it's my if it's your will, remove this cup from me. Yeah. He prayed the third time the same prayer. Yeah. And he told the disciples, come and walk with me. Please yeah. yeah. And they couldn't walk, they was all so tired, yeah. all yeah. Yeah. Jesus still kept his word. Yeah. Jesus yeah. still lived up to what he said out of his 
mouth. Even though he was all God, he was still man. Yeah. He still had the feelings of our infirmity. He still felt, you know, pain in his body. He still felt anguish as he was going to the cross. And the scripture said, he, as he was sweating, it came like great drops of blood running down from his head. Jesus Christ kept his word. And they took him to Calvary. He got up on that cross. Not for you and for me, but for everybody in this world. And all of our sins were laid on him. Not the sin just for this generation. The sin is all the way back to Genesis. All of us with Revelation. And all of us right now, our past, our present, and our future sin were laid on Jesus. And Jesus took all of our sins. He said, He that knew no sin became sin for us. Jesus Christ. On the night, on the third hour, the scripture said it was dark above the castle. All of our sins were laid on him. Uh -huh. He experienced pain. He experienced the whipping all night long. That was pain, but that wasn't the greatest pain. He experienced the crown of thorns on his head. That was pain, but that wasn't the greatest pain. The greatest pain that Jesus felt when, when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Right then and there, he from the father and the son which is called the second death but he still, still stood on that cross he still stood on that cross he took your sins and mine into the grave the scripture says he went down to the lower parts of the earth and preached to the souls in prison and on the third day he got up with all the power in his hands showing sure up that we lean in the pain and trust in him be pure in your words mean what you say Say what you mean. But there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in his word. There's power in standing up for what you believe. God always will always keep us in perfect peace. And our mind is stayed on him. And when we make words out of our mouth, let us not just say the words. Let us feel the word. Let us perform what God said in his word. Because God is looking at us to perform his word through us. Jesus Christ is our example. To live for him, yes. walk with him, talk with him, and tell God that you thank him that he allowed you to do it, to walk with his word. Yes. God is so able to do anything but faith. Yes. Let us as a church live up to our word. Let us not only be genuine, let us not only be sincere, let us not get into emotions, but tell God thank you that your word in me is pure and come out like pure gold. And if we like it or not, we all will be sifted one day or another. God allow us to be sick, to get all the infirmities out, to get all the lust out of our faith, to get all the words out of our faith, so we can use us for his glory. So we can use for God's glory this morning. Satan used his sifter to destroy us, but God used his sifter to build us up. Keep trusting God. Keep believing God, because he always and will not fail. He is God, and God all by his He will not fail. Yes, sir. To bring the best out of us. Yes. And when we Amen. say things out of our mouths, yes. and when we speak out of emotion, yes. sometimes we can be speak out of emotion. Yes. We just get to God emotional lip service. Because we can't back up what we say when we emotions come down when it's time to live up to what we said we can't do because we caught up in emotions we may be sincere Peter was so sincere when he said to Jesus but Jesus knew him more than he knew himself so when, when, when the Lord speaks to us by not going that direction but don't go down that street or leave that person alone he knows us better than we know ourselves but sometimes Lord I got this let me do this myself and we fall flat on our face. We can sit. He's going to continue to sit. He's going to allow Satan to sit. Especially us as leaders. Because we all have purpose in this life. Because somebody needs to know. No matter what you go through in this life. If your faith is true. God can deliver you through anything. He is able. He is able. The doors of the church are open.
it's on. Just got speed up. Good morning. First of all, um, I want to announce that we will be leaving at 8 o'clock Tuesday morning for the seniors who are going to the Senior Expo at Drury Lane. So we will be leaving here, uh, start going up around 8 o'clock. Thank you. 